Welcome to Yingcast, our podcast for current and future leaders wanting to develop themselves further. Every month, the Alembic team discuss and share their thoughts on issues and topics that are common in the workplace. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first Yingcast of 2021. We hope you all had an enjoyable Christmas break. Today on the podcast, we have strategy facilitators Rosanna. Hello. Matt. Hi there. And I'm Alice. We thought that the new year is the perfect time to start to discuss goal setting and the importance of getting it right and how to get it right. So there are a few different ways that you can begin to think about, identify and set your goals. The first one is a tool that we use a lot. It's called the magic wand and mind map as well. So the magic wand is a tool that we use to encourage creativity and uh, generate ideas. The premise really is if you had a magic wand and you didn't have to think about money or time or how, when you think about your goals and what you want to achieve in say 2021, what would you come up with? We encourage you to capture these in the form of a mind map and just making sure that you write down everything you think of and that nothing is a silly idea or too big or too small. Just get all of your ideas down and go from there. Yeah, I think my my map and using the magic wand is a great way of just accessing, you know, different ideas, different goals. I think it reduces constraints. It reduces um, the the voice in your mind that says that's never going to work or how am I going to do that and I think it really allows that sort of free flowing of ideas to get you to think creatively and um, so magic one is a great tool. I agree I think um, I think I'd say the same thing for, for mind mapping is a, a lot of people have goals in their mind and they never really draw those things out I think ev- everybody can probably um, uh, relate to having goals somewhere in the back of your head and never really writing them on a bit of paper and spending the year um, constructively working towards those goals. So for me, at least, mind mapping is a really good way of following all those threads um, and actually coming to what is your goal for the year or for your two or three years, uh, writing that down and uh, then spending that time working towards it. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, Matt, you can set your goals they don't have to be for a year's time they can be for any time frame that you want so it might be that you have some goals you want to achieve in say three months time there might be others that you want to achieve in three years time um but just trying out the magic wand tool and and mind mapping and see how that works for you and it's also sort of having it in front of you and um it's like an affirmation is almost isn't it just having it written down and knowing it's there sort of helps the actual achievement of the goal um I was just going to come back to the point about time frames and you know what is your goal for this year well in the current pandemic that might feel like quite a big question and actually bringing that time horizon uh closer so actually just what are your goals over the next few months whilst we're in lockdown might be quite a good way of thinking about goals um, because we have no idea what, um, you know, December 2021 is going to look like. Um, so it's just interesting thinking about different time frames and different uh, goals that might have different time horizons as well, particularly with all this uncertainty that we're all facing. Yeah, definitely. Another way that you can go about thinking about your goals is sometimes with clients, don't we, we encourage them to draw out their vision, drawing out where they want to be in a set amount of time, say a year's time. What does that look like? Can be a really great way if you're a bit more visual um, or a bit more creative, you want to get pen on paper, that can be another great way to draw out your goals and your vision for yourself. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I think there's there's loads of useful tools out there which help you um 
sort of realize what goals you have and actually writing it down is really important um, I think they say it's you're around 40% more likely to achieve your goals just by writing them down so any exercise that can get those um, get those thoughts onto paper is something that could be useful yeah I often find um, as well when you draw or think around pictures uh, rather than words you access different things as well so you might even be surprised about what comes out. I suppose ultimately, um, the most important thing about a goal, I believe, is around um, that sense of, can I achieve this? Do I believe it's possible? Um, because if you really believe that that goal is good for you, that you can achieve that, then you will make it work. You'll make it happen. And so I think belief comes into it. So I think once you've got your set of goals, so you might have a three month goal, you might have a six to 12 month goal, you know, going back through and sense checking them about, do I believe that this is possible? What do I need to have to do? What support do I need? You know, do I believe that's possible? And do I believe that that's right for me? And will serve me well I think it's really important too yeah definitely and I think you highlighted something really good there um, about what do I need and so it might be that you have set a goal for yourself or are thinking about setting a goal around something that maybe you don't have the skill necessary or the resource that's necessary to achieve that goal right now um, but thinking about what you need in order to be able to achieve that goal. Maybe it's training, um, maybe it's, if it's to do with work, maybe it's to do with budget or people, but not limiting yourself to what you have right now, thinking beyond that as to what can I achieve if I had X, Y, Z. Do you know something else I've found actually, I'm thinking back to a time when I've done goal setting um, while coaching, is that when you write your goals down and talk them through with somebody, uh, the thing you've had in the back of your head for a while that you thought was your goal doesn't always turn out to be your goal. Um, an example might be you've want, been wanting to climb the ranks, uh, be more senior, earn more money. And when you sit and really think about what your goals have been in life, they might, you might find that really you become more focused on uh, work-life balance or spending time with family. Um, there's a few exercises we do that can, can help you work through that thinking, but you know, you never know, you might really surprise yourself by doing some analysis of what you think your goals are. That's actually a really nice point, Matt, you know, you might have, uh, you might be listening to this in a work context or a personal context and actually having, you know, thinking about them as part of your collective goals are the same thing so you know having work goals personal goals and seeing how they you know chime off each other you know just one contradict the other how are you going to do that how are you going to manage you know the different pools and different directions that we all face so moving on there's another framework that we use with clients and on ourselves as well a lot um, when we're thinking about goal setting it's the now where how framework so it's thinking about where are you currently and setting a really realistic picture of where you are now sort of the good the bad and the ugly and then thinking about where you want to be in a set period of time and just making a list or again drawing out where you are now a really clear picture of that being radically honest with yourself and then being really honest as to where you want to be in that time um, we do have a third part which is the how um, but we're going to be covering that in our next yin cast next month when we talk about moving to action so once you've set your goals how you can go about making steps to achieve them I think the great thing about having a now, where, how, it sets your goals in the context of today. So what's going on for you right now? And you can do that. You, your where, your vision can be however far in the future, um, however detailed you want it to be. It can be in, in a really specific context. 
Um, so it could be with a project that you're working on. You might have goals around that this year, um, or it might be broader. So it might be what are your um, business goals or organizational goals. Um, so it could be more feel more like a business plan. Um, it is a great model for taking a problem or something you want to work on and saying, OK, where are you now? What are all the, as you say, Alice, the good, the bad and the ugly? It's a really great way of thinking about it. And then going, well, what's your vision for that? It creates that gap. It creates that sense of change, which is enough to go, yes, that's what we're shooting for. That's what I want. Um, so it propels you into already working your way towards that it gives you a sense of a journey to go on you know I like to use it in lots of different instances I think it's really powerful in lots of different settings I agree I think it's one of the the simplest and most effective tools you can use in you know so many different settings I recommend it to a whole variety of different people looking for different things yeah definitely you can have it have one for your personal goals another for your work goals and you can even do one for overall organization goals couldn't you there's sort of no limit to where you can use this framework so finally then we've got smart goals which are a really good checklist really to use when you're setting your goals it's a really useful criteria to keep in mind so the first is to be specific make sure your goal is really well defined and clear to you it's not general and it can help to think about the who what where when why questions um, so who is involved in achieving this goal um, what is the goal when do you want to achieve the, the goal by and why is this a good goal why do you want to achieve this the next is measurable how are you going to measure your progress on achieving this goal? Because most goals, you know, you don't achieve in a day. So it might, you might find it useful to think about what milestones you could set for yourself along the way to note your progress. And you can compare that then with your time scale of what you've set for yourself. Achievable, you have to be able to achieve it. Um, setting a goal that's impossible to achieve will be unhelpful and potentially very demotivating for you. So we touched on this before, but thinking about the skills and resources needed to achieve this goal. And if you don't have those, then what do you need in order to obtain these? And thinking about how long that might take. So maybe you need to go on a training course and, you know, things like that, taking that into account when you're setting your goals. And similarly, it needs to be realistic needs to be within reach and relevant to as we said before your sort of life purpose if it's for your personal goals if it's for setting goals for the company then thinking about the wider company purpose and whether this goal aligns with those making sure you're not straying too far from those and then finally we've got timely this is important to create a clear timeline with a start date which is normally you know now today and then having a target date, so whether that's six months time, 12 months time or longer. The purpose of setting the deadline is really to create um, a sense of urgency. But again, thinking about being realistic with your timeline, so making it long enough that you have time to achieve it, um, but not pushing yourself so hard that it becomes really stressful and you sort of wish you'd given yourself more time. Yeah, I think it's a great acronym. It might be quite familiar to lots of people, but um, for those of you who already know, I mean, I challenge how many people set goals in this way. Um, it's a common reason why people, you know, fail to meet their goals. So another, another way of using this acronym, SMART, is to say, well, for things that you haven't quite achieved yet, which one of those areas did you fall down on? So it's quite a nice way of yes setting goals but also reviewing your goals and going what could you work on next time yeah I think it's a great really practical really simple but a good sort of coverall um, of the things to think about when setting goals I love it yeah I, I love using it as well I, I think to Rosanna's point there is 
seems like a really simple thing. Many people will have heard of it, um, but a few of those areas, it's so easy to uh, just overlook. And when you set big goals on uh, long time frames, it can be quite hard to stay on top of how you're getting on. And when you come to the end of the year and you've not achieved it, um, a framework like this can really help break down and contextualize where you're actually trying to get to, uh, particularly the point about measurable, um, setting yourself intermediate goals and understanding what you're actually working towards can have a huge benefit on achieving a goal, which is actually quite large and broad. And again, to the point of measurable, uh, you really need to know when you've achieved that goal so you can take a step back and you know, pat yourself on the back and set your new goal. So to summarise what we've covered in this podcast, we've spoken about different tools that you can use to identify and set your goals. So we spoke about the magic wand tool and mind mapping, so getting all of your ideas down on the page. We also spoke about drawing your vision if you're a bit more visual. We also spoke about the now where how framework and building a picture of where you're at now and building a picture of where you want to be in a set amount of time and identifying that gap and then ways in which you can begin to close that gap. And then finally, we spoke about SMART goals and using this as a really useful checklist to not only set your goals, but um, to revisit throughout the journey of achieving your goals. Thank you for listening. We hope you'll join us next month when we'll be following on from this discussion on goals. We're going to cover how to make the shift into action and how to take steps towards achieving the goals that you've set. We have a few things coming up this month that you may find of interest. Firstly, Strategy Cafe is back on the 28th of January with Minter Dahl. He's an author, keynote speaker and a top digital marketing influencer. You can sign up for free through our website, alembicstrategy.com, in the Get Involved section. Until the end of February, we are offering our online training course, Seven Steps to a More Resilient You, for free. You can find out more information about this on our Learn Worlds page. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your team and others you think might find it useful, as well as social media. Thank you for listening to this episode of Yincast. We hope you enjoyed it. To get the heads up on future podcasts, you can sign up to our mailing list through our website, alembicstrategy.com, in the Get Involved section. If you enjoyed this, then you might also be interested in our other events. You can sign up to our newsletter for updates on our latest events and articles. Also, look out for Strategy Cafe, our regular leadership webinar, where Nick, our MD, interviews prominent leaders.